It's Friday morning on Reality Check Radio, and that is the morning for our political panel, which is getting quite a following, I would have to say, if um, the talk and chatter and tweets and posts and whatever is anything to go by. I want to welcome to our panel this morning, Cameron Slater, Olivia Pearson, and Marty Gibson, independent journalist. Welcome all. Good to see you again. Now we're all going to have fun like we like we should do on these sorts of shows. Good to see you too, Paul. Thank you. And Marty, sitting somewhere near the beach, I hear. Yeah. Just uh, finished olive harvesting and the snapper are running. Oh, wow. <laughs> and the living is easy. Yeah. Not okay. so much. Let's uh, get into our topics. And let's start in the States. And was it Elon Musk who kind of announced or introduced Ron DeSantis's big announcement on Twitter. What's going on there? Well, maybe Elon Musk is making a media play and trying to be the new Rupert Murdoch or the, you know, the, the, the new succession Roy family type, you know, arrangement, but um, he's Musk's, succeeding. Musk's a smart guy, you know, I mean, all these lefties all complained about him buying Twitter and it was going to be terrible. It was going to fall over. And it was going to be all of these things. And it's been none of those things. And if he's sitting there, um, he's not endorsing uh, Ron DeSantis as such, but he's well, that's, lending, that's his, he's lending his credibility to Ron DeSantis, which is a smart move from DeSantis. And it's also signaling to the to the Trump type people that, you know, actually here's someone who's got a little bit of uh, heft, a guy who has stood up to the left in Florida, who stood up to all of the COVID nonsense from Biden um, stood up to Disney. Stood um, up to Disney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, removed Mickey Mouse their, removed their tax-free status and then just went after them. You know, and and is actually a freedom-loving American, which is what we need to have in in the United States. We need to go back the to that. Move was flying those illegal immigrants up to Martha's Vineyard. I thought that was a, <laughs> a masterstroke. That was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, flying them up, putting them on buses, and dropping them off at Democrat homes. Uh, all of a sudden, they didn't really want them in there anymore. They weren't geared up. Nine like hours. That. It lasted nine hours. It was like, wait on, <laughs> wait on. I think it's really interesting. Um, I, I'm getting the impression that the US election is just going to be, yeah, you know, the potential now to be the most awesome campaign ever, you know, with Trump and DeSantis. The, the next year or so is just going to be spectacular. RFK Jr.? Yeah, Possibly. I just don't know if I can believe him. Mm. Yeah, he, he was he was all for locking up people who disagreed with climate change, which was yeah. odd. But I mean, his book was great. His stuff on on uh, Fauci was great. Mm. And and good old Joe, <laughs> sleepy Joe. If he, if he doesn't trip up or down a few steps and hurt himself in the meantime, uh, or Joe Biden always reminds me of. Dennis Denuto in court with you know, with um, in in the castle where he's sitting there and he's asked to you know well, what's this case about and he's well, oh you know it's the constitution it's the vibe of the thing well that's what Biden's like except he can't even get that out can't say constitution he'll just say oh uh, 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 some other oh, thing you know you the know, thing you know the thing <laughs> <laughs> what is I, it with I, those glasses he's always wearing those damn glasses those you know. Oh, avi- job, the aviators. Aviators. A- aviators, yeah. yeah it's to yeah. hide his glassy eyes. I wear those too, though, Paul, to be fair. They're good glasses. Oh, okay. If you if you were, nothing in that then. If you were hopped up on all the drugs that he's he's on to keep him awake, you'd wear We, those we see the way he too. walks. See the way he walks. <laughs> walks like he's got syphilis. You know how vaccines, you, you know, when you when you make a vaccine, you take a weakened form of the pathogen and then you inject it to, to form a resistance against it. I've always thought. Joe Biden meets that criteria if he's trying to get rid of white people better than the mRNA shots did. It's like a, you know, just we can't let these guys in charge anymore. Well, so getting back to DeSantis. Corn pop. Corn pop. I used to beat up corn pop. Corn pop. Rub my legs down. Yeah. No, because but, they, I had hairy legs and the children used to rub my blonde hairs and then I knew about cockroaches. Uh, <laughs> it's the I, thing. That's, you know the thing. It's terrible dementia at play. It's just awful. What, what was Trump's nickname for DeSantis? DeSanctimonious. 
It, what do you mean was, Paul? It oh, is. Well, Liz, sorry, okay. <laughs> and now he, it's desanctimonious, and now he's shortened it to desanctus, which is very Catholic. <laughs> he is good with the nicknames. But I want to say this about DeSantis is that he has been an amazing governor for Florida. Who wouldn't want him as your governor? Um, His courage through the COVID pandemic, his ability to call nonsense on obvious nonsense from masks to eventually, well, and quite quickly, the lockdowns. But I can't, and, and yes, it's going to be very entertaining to see the field with the Republican primary, for sure, because we've got um, already Tim Scott's also running, another Republican South Carolina senator. Um, we've got uh, Ron DeSantis, and you've got Trump, of course, who's almost owed it, considering the last election was stolen from him. But, I mean, that's a viewpoint that probably won't be taken seriously, except it will by his base. Um, but... DeSantis has a really, really good chance of being a future president, and I feel that he's blown that um, with this announcement on Twitter that he's now going to run up against Trump. I don't think he's going to win. He's already trailing hugely, um, and, of course, he's not actively running, but Trump isn't actively running yet either because primary season hasn't started. But I can't help but feel it's a mistake. He needs to complete his governorship of Florida. Um gain some more years um, in this ever-changing climate. Because he's 44, delicious. right? He's only, he's 44. Yeah. I mean, it's not old and it's not particularly young either. It's about, you know, I mean, Barack Obama was in his 40s when he ran. Um, it's, it's a normal age. But um, to go up against Trump when Trump has helped DeSantis so much, Trump had a huge influence on DeSantis getting elected in Florida. That's and right. I think this is where Trump's bile comes from over calling him Ronda Sanctimonious is that Trump must watch these younger guys come along as young whippersnappers that seek out his help for so many years as a, you know, as an all-American billionaire and a person that, you know, watches politics closely as Trump always has. Um, and then they kind of turn, they get a little bit of glory and then they turn and become your competitor. There's nothing wrong with being a competitor. The American system is built on competition. Yeah, and I think that, I think that's good, Olivia, to, that, they have, that they actually have a bit of a slap around of Trump and dissenters. Because what you could end up seeing is a joint... Um, you, the problem that Trump had is he didn't have an ability to build a legacy or to build a continuation. It was Trump, Trump, Trump. You know, he had Mike Pence there and he got one go at it and Pence showed what a gutless coward he was. Absolutely was. But in the past, yes. you were able to have a, a president and a vice president team that showed a pathway to being re-elected as a, as a Republican president because you would hand it over to the vice president and carry on. And they haven't had that for a while, and it hasn't happened like that for a long time. So, if there was a joint, if there was a joint ticket of DeSantis and Trump, and whatever for Trump and DeSantis, it doesn't really matter. Then you've got that pathway to say, well, Trump's going to do one term, and then he then hand it over to DeSantis, who will then do two terms, and then they end up with the Republicans being there for three terms, and you can make considerable changes in twelve years that you couldn't make in four, or you can't make in 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 eight years. Yeah, so, but Trump doesn't do politics with that. No, no, he does style. what he feels like. No. And, and, and no one should. I mean, if you want to attract uh, conviction politicians that really love their country and morally think about what's right, all this tactical uh, um, strategizing long term is is that's where your energy goes instead of actually going into fixing your country and having a proper moral base to actually know what your policies are or are not that, um, trump we know that trump rules on instinct a lot he he goes by instinct and sometimes his instincts are wrong which um um judas pence mike pence um app appointing him to vp and the coronavirus task force and all the rest, terrible appointments. Trump made some terrible appointments. I mean, Rex mm. Tillerson for one another. I mean, globalists and stuff. Um, but um, you'll, you'll find that, I mean, even and here's the thing, even Mike Pence is considering a run at the moment 
to oppose Trump in the primary, which is just a laugh. There's a good hope in hell. That's delusional. Oh, that. No. And, um, and also the disloyalty of that um, to a former president that's still in the field and, and lost election. But, of course, um, Mike Pence was the one that certified that shonky election and didn't have enough guts to say, no, um, a lot of these states, the swing states, especially Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, they needed to be taken back and redone. Arizona. Were, Arizona, yep, there you go. Speaking well, of Arizona, uh, is it possible, you know, you're t- talking basically about a Trump DeSantis ticket, let's say, but then there's Carrie Lake. She's impressive. She would be far better, and Trump will never consider DeSantis um, on the ticket as his VP if he sniffs disloyalty. Well, there's um, a there's a there's been a, a a political action committee set up to draft Tucker Carlson now. So someone's pouring millions of dollars into that to try and draft Tucker Carlson to stand for president, which would be interesting. You know, the last you know media personality, for want of a better term, who did that was Ronald Reagan, and he ended up being one of the greatest presidents. The yeah, but he wasn't a journalist, was he? No, well, and Donald Trump. He's an actor. He's an actor. Yeah. 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 An actor. Donald Trump's got the cut through because of that that DeSantis won't have, even though core Republicans will love him. You know, the fact is the Rust Belt won't get him the way they love Trump and uh, he probably, you know, doesn't it's have It's nothing a billion dollars of advertising. Got. Nothing a billion dollars of advertising can't fix, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump's so ahead in the polls, though. That's the thing. Isn't yeah, but, the, the but DeSantis him. wasn't on the ticket. So, you yeah, know, but he's how only just now declared. To, how long does it take to claw that uh, into something? It'd be interesting to see. I mean, well, we'll he's, watch. He's, he's got a hell of a super pack. And this is the thing that makes me dislike this whole move by DeSantis is that we've watched him be so flattered by Mitch McConnell, um, all, all yeah. the rhinos that are, are the never Trumpers, they have flattered DeSantis into this run. And a man that's that susceptible to running on some kind of vanity ticket um, appalls me. I used to love Ron DeSantis, and I think he's got some great virtues. And yes, it'll up the competition, and Trump can, can handle that. But this, make no mistake, he would be um, flattered into that role. And who knows what's behind that, because you'll probably find the deep status behind that kind of flattering too. If they Mitch like, McConnell's involved, it is yeah, absolutely, absolutely the deep status. Absolutely. That's if he lasts. And see, there's been this, I felt for it, there's been this AI that's been going around. It's a deep fake of Hillary Clinton coming out and endorsing for DeSantis. <laughs> um, but you that. can bet your butt that she would want DeSantis there and not Trump again because Trump, yeah, yeah. Trump's going to want vengeance. Well, Trump, Trump humiliated her so, so badly. Um, so I mean, I'm surprised he hasn't died. Arkansas. A bit of Arkansas because he embarrassed her so badly. But maybe the Secret Service keeps him alive. Plenty of people are moving to Florida, though. Yeah. Well, everyone's leaving California, aren't they? It's a dog of a place. I'd like to go to Florida right now. Mm, Nice place. Been there a few times. All right. Are are we done with... Sorry, Marty, what was that? Just come to Papamaw. (laughs) The Florida (laughs) of New Zealand. Yeah. All right. Are we done with... That particular topic, do you think? Any last words on oh, the there'll be no last. There'll be no last words on that. It's going to be a, an epic fight, and it's going to be enjoyable, and there'll be deep fakes and AI and, you know, attack ads, and I just love American politics. I wish it was as brutal as that here, but it's I not know. real. At least They're all they, just so pussies, you know, they, in New they Zealand. They have out the issues, don't they? And remember, Nikki Haley is also going to be on mm. that. Mm. She'll be the the brown um She's the deep male. stater. She's deep, yeah. Star, isn't she? yeah. And Trump appointed her, didn't he, he to um, the United Nations? And he's been very disappointed in her ever since. And she's a huge, she's been pushing for the Ukraine war and all that stuff. And mm. yep, it's going to be a very interesting field. I liked what Trump had to say. And I'm really sticking my neck out because the Trump derangement syndrome sufferers are going to try and shoot it off. But in that uh, CNN town hall, when he came out and he made that comment about Ukraine, I thought that was excellent. Which comment was that exactly? Well, we said, you know. Oh, he um, wants people to stop dying. Yeah, he just wanted to stop people dying. It wasn't about winners yeah. and losers. We just, I could, you know, finish it, I don't know, tomorrow, this week, maybe. That's not On by lunchtime. Yeah, yeah, by lunchtime. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just saying flat out that too many people are dying and we've got to stop the well, dying. it's true. It's so true. Do you well, think I the TDS, 
can be broken though. That's that's a big. No, you never get rid of that. It's it's the same reason. It's the same sort of behaviour that we saw when John Key was prime minister. But it's already been broken um, in many ways. There are a lot of Democrats that have watched what happened to Trump and the anomalies in the election. Remember, many, 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 many thousands of Democrats, millions of Democrats, do not believe that the 2020 election was legit. They know that that was taken from Trump. What they do about it, who knows? I mean, if you're dealing with half commies, they probably won't do anything great. But, um, you know, they, 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 they've they also watched what's happened to their country under Biden and they would rather be under Trump. So I think well, the they, Trump they, derangement they, syndrome is already broken and the fact that CNN had Trump um, do a town hall on their channel and, and um, you know, because they need the ratings. They need the ratings that badly. <laughs> they needed to have, a, have their uh, host destroyed by Trump on their own channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> took one for the team. But all that wouldn't have happened. That would never have happened a few years ago. It would have been unthinkable. No. So TDS will die a natural death as that man just proves himself. A bit like Biden. Well, yeah. speaking of Biden, you know, and, and this is, you know, with the New Zealand coverage, just the radio silence on the ongoing revelations about corruption in the Biden family and I oh, say so you, um, you missed the description there, Marty. It's the What's Biden that? crime family. You say. <laughs> the Did Biden, I say that? No, you just said the Biden family. It's the yeah, Biden sorry. crime family. Yeah. Amazing. Just silence. Oh, it's total silence, but you know, Trump well, says something or tweets something and it's all over the. Well, then they'd, ha- they'd have to wind back all their positive reporting of Biden over this time. Wouldn't they? They'd have to admit that they, well, they have, I mean, they've lied about absolutely everything, and the Durham report is showing this. And um, we'll get they were that part of the lie. They were peddling the lie. Yeah, they did it. They they are the committers. Yeah, it, it, it's just lies to cover evil. That's what it is. But mm. let's move on to the speaking of evil. <laughs> let's <laughs> move on to WHO, World Health Organization, and as you've framed it here, Cam. Uh, They've enjoyed their newfound totalitarian powers that uh, they got under COVID and are pushing to have even more control. Now, our listeners are across quite a bit of this, and you're talking about what the ability of the of Tedros or whoever is in that position to single handedly declare a a world pandemic because he's feeling grumpy one morning. Well, they they um, it's not just that that they're wanting to get you know, rules, I guess, or laws passed where the WHO supersedes national governments in making decisions in, for example, the WHO supersedes what the President of the United States says, or worse than that, supersedes not only what the President of the United States says, but each of each state's governors saying and telling them this is how you're going to run this pandemic, and we're going to control all of that, including the messaging, uh, media control, um, censorship. And we're starting to see now the evidence coming out of the pernicious uh, controls that were exerted under COVID for controlling the messaging. You know, there's a huge yeah. uproar in Australia today um, about how uh, the the government in Australia uh, had Twitter uh, censor or del- or have uh, suppressed in Australia thousands and thousands of tweets uh, because it didn't agree over with four thousand. Yeah, wow. no, not just tweets. It was mostly Facebook, um, but how basically they have that portal. Alex, Alex Antic, that man's antics are just brilliant. God, what wow. a what a man of courage, and the way the way that he did that. Um, inquiry in, in Congress to the, um, the what are they called? The, our, their version of the um, internal department, the Home Affairs, Department of Home Affairs. They um, literally were acting as um, Alex Antic pointed out. He said, so the Department of Home Affairs is the whistleblower for big tech censorship in Australia. And they were so flummoxed because he summed it up. But um, we would have the same thing going on here. That's Absolutely. How, yeah, how Chantal Baker lost her Facebook it's how, page. Yeah, it's how and, I was, it's how we were deplatformed and yep. 
yeah, you know, the BFD was on all sorts of hit lists and in inside the Ministry of Health. Um, you know, we had to do official information act requests to confirm all of that. But yeah, and now we've got the disinformation project. It's continuing on this attempt to silence people that are, are simply speaking their mind. You know. The, the other thing about that, though, Cam, is that you mentioned the disinformation pro project because that is our version of this. Um, but what came out from Alex Antic questioning those people was how this was originally part of the deal with the Christchurch call, Jacinda's Christchurch call, her little pet project with Macron, Emmanuel Macron of France, and her to censor violent extremism online. But this is where they've taken that. They got to censor the violent extremism, but they expanded that into misinformation and disinformation on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media sites. That is unbelievable because that's, and no wonder the disinformation project are always looking at Voices for Freedom and anybody in our freedom community looking for something that they can call domestic terrorism. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and it was all being originally run out of the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet. And so they they say, oh, no, we're not publicly funded. Well, how are you funded then? You know, you, you're, in, you're inside the Univ Auckland University. That's a public organisation. Any funding you get there is subject to the Official Information Act. So cough it up. They're, they're, they're spreading disinformation now saying that they're not publicly funded when they clearly what, are. What about the RFP? Is that a Trojan horse to establishing a sort of disinformation organisation or clearing house that is out for public tender at the moment? The Free Speech Union are going to have a pitch at it as well, but it seems to be pretty well geared to giving a job to the people we're talking about. Well, it's, it's a... It, you know, I hesitate the word to use the word conspiracy, but if you read, um, you know, I, there's a website that I get links sent to me every day from called Reclaim the Net, which is a freedom organisation that's looking at all of this. So there's a massive push on globally for the creation of disinformation projects. There's a massive push on globally for the creation of state-controlled digital currencies. There's a massive push on um, around the world for um, the WHO to have more of a say in individual countries' health outcomes and stuff like that. Someone's pulling the strings. Yeah, right? we, don't know, we don't know who Mr. Global is. It's the yeah, lockstep thing again. Klaus the Schwab. No, no, he's just the, he's just the man the that man. allow you to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what but, was interesting also about Alex, Alex Antic um, confronting those people in, in the Australian... Con Congress is that um, this was ScoMo's government that did this. Yep. That had you, you know this was Scott Morrison and Peter Dutton who was the Minister of the Home Affairs Department, and um, and they did it after Scott Morrison asked them to lean into in quotes lean into misinformation online, and they used the Christchurch call which is only meant to target violent extremism. Uh to mm. do it. Well, they'll move it's that now to climate change. They'll say we need to ch uh, move the dial. It's like the UK has got the nudge unit, right? We we had the same thing in the Prime Minister's yeah. Department here. They just didn't call it that, you know. Mm -hmm. But we've got these nudge units that are trying to move the dial on, on these discussions uh, about anything and topic. But climate change is the, is the one that's the, the cause the celeb of, of the left, right? They just love that because it gives them the and ability the right. to control citizens in many, many different ways, all under the pretext well, it's the ultimate of one, stopping isn't it, really? the rain. It's you know? the ultimate one. Yeah. So, you know, um, it's a worry, but... David Seymour said, i just say, he said no compromise on sovereignty, none at all. He was pretty clear about that. Yeah, they all program. say that. They I all mean, say that. But <laughs> yeah. and, and they all, Winston Peters will say that too um, and has said that, uh, although he's been excellent on this. Um, you put out that press release, Cam, today, which yeah. was a collection of his tweets, was it not? Yeah. Um, uh, which, which was very good. But I just want to I just want to make one other mention while we're talking about the who. Are we still talking about the who? We're still yeah. talking about the who. Around there. <laughs> um, I just want to say as a lovely Thing that really tickled me was that Mislav Kolokusic, Kolokusic, who is the European Parliament um, MP from Croatia. Oh, I like, I'm a fan of that guy. 
He's just yeah. wonderful. He, he, you know, he's on this whole thing about he's very angry that nations, including Croatia, because he believes in fighting for Croatia, um, would surrender their authority um, to uh, to unelected bureaucrats. There's no accountability with the WHO. You know, they're unelected, they're appointed. Um, only shills can have um, positions of power and everybody has, all sovereign nations will have to kowtow to whatever they declare, declare a pandemic. And he used the term, um, well, he said it was safer to sign contracts with Colombian drug cartels than with the WHO. <laughs> and he called them... Um, a terrorist organization wow. is a terrorist organization and gorgeous and, and totally backed by China. China are their biggest backer. Yeah. Um, but he gorgeously said in his broken Croatian English, he said, they, it's all foolies and lies, foolies instead of fools. Yeah. The, um, I used to not worry about organizations like the United Nations and the WHO and UNICEF and all of these groups because they're just a bunch of bureaucrats, but someone schooled them up and now they're actually very dangerous. Before they'd have endless meetings, conferences, and we'd all just laugh and go, oh, yeah, whatever, have your conference over there, produce your, your folders full of minutes and have your meetings, have more meetings, go on. Have your, a your Manila, Manila Brown folders, they can. Yeah, yeah. So, so you didn't used to worry about them, but but now someone's educated them and they're actually doing evil things. Yeah, and so, quite competent at it. you know, so well, it, 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 it's brought to it. You know, I used to ignore them. Now I'm thinking, you know, drain the swamp has some merits, you know, some let's just not drain the swamp. Let's just, let's just completely fill it in as well. Blow it up. Concrete. Concrete. Is that about the UN? He um, says, oh, you know, I've seen those uh, organisations and they're so inefficient and, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about them actually achieving no, they've anything. They've got smarter that's now. That's, that's a good point, Marty, because I've encountered that in the interviews I've done here. I've heard that from him, but also Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union. Well, if you think politicians or they can organise anything, I'm, I, you're wrong there. They can't. And I'm thinking, well, can't they? Yeah, you know, <laughs> just, just just like Klaus Schwab, the the World Health Organization is what they allow you to see. Mm. I don't think someone else wants um, some uh, allegation of a of a pandemic to allow um, all national sovereign to be sus sovereignty to be suspended. You don't think the people who um, print the money and own the media want that? Yeah, too? yeah. Okay. Um, Chantal Baker did a really, really, really good interview of a Dutch guy. Um, Terry Bordet, I think she calls him. I'd say Bordet, but Mr. Bordet, let's call him. Um, but, you know, he, he's an absolute polymath and runs the party um, Forum for Democracy International. Um, but, you know, he's got views that are out there. But I have to say most of them I agree with, most of them. Um, he's, um, and he was saying that you got to remember that this is a war against the globalists. And globalism has one task and only one task, and that is to smash the inv individual sovereignty of nations. That's it. Yep. Yep. One goal. And we're seeing that all around us. I mean, everything seems to fit into that hideous um, globalist agenda. <clears throat> and the first person, serious person to step onto the world stage and take on the globalists and say, no, you don't get to do that was Trump in 2016. Which so is they smashed him. Yeah. yeah. That's why they they smashed him. But see, that's what I keep saying to people when they say to me, oh, we need to vote for National to get rid of Labour. I said, why? The National's the other side of the same coin that Labour's totally. on. Totally. We were other, telling you that for years, Cam. The yeah, other yeah. side of the Love same you, us. We were telling you that for years. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was only because of the, the shock of the pandemic and the draconian way that it was, you know, the rules and regulations were imposed on us and the opposition stood so there weird. and said, no, or actually cheered the Opposition? Them on. Really? Yeah. You know, Find another and, word. And so I came to the conclusion very rapidly that just lurching from red to blue and blue to red back again doesn't change anything. And, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, what if, um, if, uh, if um, Bill English had been the prime minister when the pandemic hit? Well, well, what if? 
Are you seriously telling me that Bill English, the ultimate statist, the the guy that just did everything Treasury told him to do, wouldn't have done everything that Ashley Bloomfield had told him to do and do exactly the same things, but just be more efficient at taking away our freedoms and our rights as they stomped all over us? He would have loved that. He 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 he's not a freedom lover. He right. he ran his own caucus by fear. So he would have just enjoyed that and just got off on it, and we would have, we would have had a more efficient type of fascism. Yeah, we would have had um, compulsory track and trace like Taiwan did. Well, he probably would have endorsed David Seymour's idea of um, sending round buses with um, th- um, goons to kick in the door to forcibly vaccinate you, you know, because that would have, that would have been, you know, oh, yeah, that seems reasonable. Bill English would have exactly done that. We wouldn't have That's had it any different. Efficient, yeah. He was right into the numbers-driven stuff, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he would have worked on the numbers of, you know, who who we could have playing the orchestra on the train station for the internment camps for those who refused to be vaccinated. <laughs> he, he would have done that. I, I know what that guy's like. You know, but this is the and let problem. us not also forget that I think the most recent co-chair of one of those WHO get-togethers was our very own. Ashley Bloomfield. So we're right in the middle of it. Absolutely. Well, the, 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 the globally, if you ask in, in corporate in the corporate world, right, where they've got branch offices in New Zealand, and when there's new products come out, they usually send stuff here to test it, right? Well, it's the same in politics. It's the same with these bureaucracies. Oh, let's see if we can get it to fly. Goes in New great Zealand. in New Zealand. Goes great yeah. in New Zealand. Goes great in New Zealand. Let, let's see if we can get it to fly. Let's see if we can have total lockdown, China style, um, but with a smiley face and see if the the citizens will willingly comply with it. Oh, look, they did. Oh, excellent. Right now, let's see if we can get We've them done to done our roll. market research. Let's go. That's right. And and they've proved it. And we look, are a, a, a hothouse or a breeding ground for stupid ideas. So we where, does this, where does this, th- this brings me to a question that wasn't necessarily on our talking points, um, but I can't help but bring it up now, and that's what the hell are we going to do with all this trade with China because our farmers are in are beholden to, to this um, and no, no politician would dare um, go up against our partnership with tra- China, which is so meaningful to us but so unmeaningful to them. We're just a blip, but for us it's a huge um, money earner. Um, no politician is going to want to bring that up because that would be suicide for their campaign. But they cut their donations down from the well, CCP. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> long term, knowing that China backs the WHO, the UN, World Economic Forum, and the Labour Party, the National Party. Yeah, I mean, where does this? And not to mention what happened with Wuhan and all that, um, and then the fact that we we got basically after that. Uh, pandemic was released, we got, uh, co- you know, Chinese characteristics right through our society from masks to flipping lockdowns, which I still can't believe ever happened, but they did. Um, when are we going to, when is somebody going to talk seriously about New Zealand's hopeless reliance on China as a trading partner? Would, would Winston do that? Yeah. I, yes, but in a nuanced way. Um, he's got to tread a fine path. You know, if you've been a foreign minister, you've had to interact with these types of people. But I've had, you know, reasonable discussions with Winston over whiskey and cigars, you know, in a smoke-filled room, the way politics used to be done and should should be done again. And, um, you know, he's, he's heading towards the anti-globalist stance. He's, I, see, I keep reminding Red him. Red-pilled. I, I said... I say to him, Winston. It's taking what's the, time. I say, Winston, what's the name of your party? Yeah, so, that's a good uh, point. You know, New Zealand what's first. The, the National Party. Who? <laughs> the, the National <laughs> Party. They should change their name. Well, they should. The worst, they should. You know, that question of China came for me when it's the only time I've ever seen Jacinda Ardern run. Was was <laughs> when someone asked her a question about Hong Kong, and she said. Excuse me, I've got to go, and actually ran away from the podium. Wow. 
Yeah. Arms flailing. And I felt an icy chill go through through me. Arms flailing. But nobody wants to take on China. I mean, you know, I mean, we all know I dislike Jacinda intensely, but, you know, in fairness, no politician wants to take on that question. It used to be, though, Olivia, like I can remember when I was a teenager and, you know, Dad was the Auckland Divisional Chairman of the National Party and then he was the President of the National Party. And I can remember him getting phone calls from the Chinese ambassador for him as the president or a senior National Party person to go and tell off the national ministers who had said something in favour of Taiwan. or And it used to be that national MPs would go to Ty, the Taiwanese National Day celebrations and wear KMT pins, you know, the Kuomintang um, pins on their on their jackets, and that they would do these things and support Taiwan. And under John Key, he actually forbade all of his MPs to actually go to the, anything to do with Taiwan. And they wow. sucked up to the CCP like you wouldn't believe. And the One China policy. And the One, one China. China policy. So I put it down to this creeping, you know, slide in standards that the National Party had where they prostituted themselves to the Chinese and Chinese interests uh, in order to pursue a free trade deal, which has actually crippled our country, and we don't know it. Well, and and I, I blame John Key for that, you know. Simon and that's O'Connor's the reason... um, openly supporting Taiwan. Simon O'Connor. Simon O'Connor. Um, yeah. But, I mean, supporting Taiwan is one thing, but are we, I mean, after what happened in the Ukraine and after, what, after watching um, NATO well, the forces behind NATO, the deep state behind which rules NATO, um, and especially the UN Security Committee, they they gave the finger to Russia every time Russia asked for serious consideration around their security interests, which meant no NATO expansion. They didn't want um, missiles trained on them from the Ukraine, which seems like a fair request. Um, they got goaded into this war and then they saw um, the weakness of the West and then took their moment. But it makes me wonder now exactly what's going on with China, if it's similar, because um, America and the UK, um, and I know Boris Johnson had this as well, they were very, very, very vocal in protecting and wanting to protect um, Taiwan from China. But... Um, the, but America has to stay close to neutral because they have already signed on to supporting China's um, one China policy, which means you cannot be backing Taiwan. But people like to remember Nancy Pelosi was going to go flying over to Taiwan, rec uh, not recently, but in the last yeah, year, yeah. you know, and um, and. America, the, the other forces in the government did not like that approach because it was uh, what's provocative. It's provoking China. And now there's a lot of talk about um, China taking Taiwan. Um, <laughs> are we joke. watching something similar to what no. we just watched? No, and I'll tell you why. There's a big hunk of water between China and Taiwan. Well, it's not that big. It's not an ocean. It's 100K. It's, it's yeah. a long way to be getting shot at while you yeah, that's go right. landing craft. Now, if China could take Taiwan, they would have, right? They can't. No, they, got, they, they would they, have because they know that the West would mount a, a defence against it. But even that, even if you just look at it, right, for a start, the Chinese are smarter than the Russians. But it's a whole lot easier to roll tank divisions across a land border into an adjoining country and, and roll them up. Right? Which is flat. Yeah, you can also have air superiority. You can have all of these sorts of things, right? You, you have the ability. It's much easier to project power. Like you can put an artillery piece on the border and you can suppress anything within a 40-kilometer radius, right? You can't put artillery pieces on the border of China and fire it at Taiwan. They don't, just can't go there. You can only use so many missiles, they can be shot down. You have to be able to project power and the Chinese have only recently got aircraft carriers, ironically clapped out Russian aircraft carriers, which you know one of them was the Kiev that was built in the Ukraine and has been renamed. But in order to 
operate carriers. You need to create a carrier group and then you need to create submarine forces that are around. You need to create uh, missile defenses in that carrier group. And then you have to have coordinated. It, it takes decades, decades and decades and decades of combat, of training to get the skills to be able to project power, which aircraft carriers do. So China's got one aircraft carrier. There's another one on its way. So they've got two. Well, the Americans, I don't think we know what they have, Cam. I really don't. You can't I, hide I, an aircraft carrier. I think carrier. we get arrogant and think we know what people have. Well, but do you I even do need the do. territory? Do you even need the territory? It's the influence that yeah. makes the difference. No, right? but, but what I'm it's saying like you don't is need to conquer New Zealand. They've already conquered it. No, but if you want to get Taiwan, you have to cross that water and you have to have a, 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 a military and a navy that can do that. And they don't, they just don't have that. Like you, you can't just rock up and land. And it's, it's look, the easiest way to understand it is when the coup happened in 1987 in Fiji, David Longy called in the head of defence in New Zealand and said, right, we're going to go and go in there and we're going to um, invade Fiji and we're going to put the government back into power. And they laughed at him. They laughed at David Longy. And they said, look, we've got three Hercules they only can, one of them works at any one yeah, time. At any one works at, at one time. So if we're going to send, say, you know, um, the SAS up, how many do you want to send up? Well, because we can take 45 soldiers and Zealand. all of their gear to support them on the ground, but it'll take three and a half hours to fly up to Suva. They land, and then they've got to turn around and fly back again to get the next load, and that means that that those troops that you just landed there, the 45 troops or the 88 troops in their support, now have to fight off the Fijian well, army. They get wiped out. But just get right. wiped out. Exactly. And they've got to do that for a minimum of eight hours before we can get back to them with the next lot. That's if the thing doesn't right? break down. And so Longy said, oh, well, why don't we send a, a transport ship up there? Yeah, okay, how do we get them from there onto the shore? And how do we do that without getting shot at? It's really difficult to go and invade an island mm. nation. Right, it's it's a whole order of magnitude more difficult than rolling tanks across a, a, a drawn border on the, on the. So yeah. so so could Taiwan defend itself, or would yes. it require the West? It would require the West, but they have huge bases. They've built them in mountains. They can actually land airplanes on runways that are underground. You know, it, it's amazing what they've built. Like they could hold off long enough that supplies could come in from the West. I tell you, those them. hypersonic missiles, already you carry a groups underwater, honestly. No, but, but, but the Ukrainians have been defeating hypersonic missiles. Yeah, really? Yeah, so, yeah really? Can yeah, they? I, I don't yeah. buy that. 12,000 kilometres an hour? No, nah, it's impossible. Yeah, but, but 12,000 kilometres, there's a flaw in hypersonic missiles. Oh, okay. Right? What is it? The flaw is, in order to hit the target, they have to slow down. And so, uh, you know, the Israeli Iron Dome system could defeat them. The Patriot missile system is able to defeat them now because the thing is, once you use, the first time you use them, everyone goes, oh, my God, how, how are we going to beat that? But as soon as they start using these things, there's telemetry, there's electronic signatures, there's information that can be You rain enough of them down and some are going to get through. Yeah, but, you know, um, Russia hasn't really got a great economy. Just have a look at the May Day Parade. The May Day Parade was a joke. They rolled out one T-43 tank, T-34 tank from World yeah. War II. They've got huge resources. Exactly. You know. but, but, but I guess getting back to the idea that I was, you know, pondering was um, are we watching the West goad China into a war with Taiwan like we just watched them goad Putin into attacking the Ukraine? Possibly. Yeah. I don't think they're that smart. No, they were way smarter than that, surely. The Chinese are smarter than that. They won't, they won't be good. They've got a, the Chinese have got a 5,000-year plan. Yeah. Right? They look up the plan, they go, that's not for another 2,000 yeah, no, years. That's, no, that's not for another 500 years. No, we won't worry about that. All uh, right, you know, we, better, we better move because um, time's ticking and we've got other topics to get through. And this is a really interesting one, the Durham Report. Olivia, you and I have talked about this already. And the name, I think I mentioned him, Alexander Downer came up. So what's going on here now? What's the latest on this? Well, the Durham Report shows that um, Alexander, they used Alexander Downer and George Papadopoulos. Remember, George Papadopoulos was the guy that met Alexander Downer and another Australian diplomat in a pub 
in London, which Alexander Downer, um, well, it he turns out. He was the High Commissioner, wasn't he? He was the High, he was the high Commissioner of Australia, yep, and um, for, for the UK. But the FBI used and Clinton's, you know, nefarious, um, seditious machine used um, that meeting between Papadopoulos and Alexander Downer and the other diplomat to kick off the investigation into the Trump, into the Trump hurricane. campaign. Yeah, and the crossfire whole, the whole, hurricane. Yeah, yeah but and, here's and, the problem. <laughs> but it turns out that Alexander Downer did not say to the FBI what the leaked information to the media said that he said about um, poor old George Papadopoulos. Um, and on top of that, there was no. They'd already opened the investigation before Downer had actually met George Papadopoulos. So it was a, a total fabrication. They used, by the FBI to yeah. cover the their you know soft coup that they were trying to run at the time to prevent the Trump campaign winning uh, to assist Hillary Clinton, they were actually actively involving themselves in politics, and they used that as cover and made poor Alexander Downer a look like a snitch yeah. and now look like a fool. And yeah, they made him look like a snitch. But I mean, I, I gotta say, I had moments of hilarity reading through some of the articles on the scam. You'll appreciate it. I know. <laughs> Only because um, um in the Epoch Times it says specifically Peter Strzok, you know, he's the horrible little FBI guy that kicked this whole in Like a little troll. Oh, he looks like <laughs> Satan. That's mm. what he looks oh, like. I know he managed to pull he managed to pull Lisa Page though. Yeah, how'd he do that? Oh, anyway. Power. Just, She's obviously got terrible taste in men. But it said specifically Strzok wrote in his book and told Horowitz, that's Michael Horowitz, the inspector general that wrote the original report before Durham took it over, and TV interviews that Downer was prompted to come forward when he heard Trump say during a campaign speech, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. However, Downer never said this and couldn't have said it because he provided his information before Trump made his speech. <laughs> but th okay. this, this shows you that the actual FBI and the Hillary campaign and Peter Strzok and Corrupt. those awful, seditious it, people. Is this treason? Yeah, they were so yes. guilty in their conscience that when Tre Trump on one of his campaigns was going, Russia, isn't, if you're listening. Isn't the penalty for treason like, you know, mm -hmm. the death yeah, penalty? But you can, yeah. but in the in Article Three of the American Constitution, treason only applies if you're at war with that nation. So it's oh, sedition. Okay. okay. I would say it's definitely espionage, and therefore seditious. I think. But I mean, anyway, that just oh, look. Every time Trump must have opened his mouth, they would have been, you know. <laughs> so so we were to believe boots. that Alexander Downer was triggered by Trump saying. No, yeah, I mean, that, it was no, that's what, a joke. No, that's what, that's what the said. FBI said. That's what, yeah, that's the, what FBI the FBI said. said it turned out that's, that's what they're trying to put forward. But yeah. I remember when Trump said that, it was obviously a joke. Well, what we do know now, well, though, no, is that well, some, it was half true. It was half person, true. Yeah, but, but it was said in a in a joking way. Yeah. I was I mean, what, in Trump fashion. Yeah. Yeah. What we know absolutely, though, is the person who comes up with investigation code names is clearly a Rolling Stones fan. Yeah. Crossfire <laughs> Hurricane. Yeah. I thought it was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Is that Bob Dylan? <laughs> Rolling Stone? No, no it's, a, it's this Rolling Stone song, isn't it? Oh, okay. oh it could How be. It but to Mozart? The okay. naming of these things, though, it's, it's quite an interesting, the, the, the names that are assigned. But their conscience would have been, because they were colluding with Russia, the Democrats and the Hillary Clinton's people, because they were colluding with people like Danchenko to try and get the P-tapes and everything else, um, their conscience was just so dark that every time Trump said something in his glorious innocence of, you know, um, like like that, Russia, if you find the 30,000 emails that are missing, let us know, and we, we hope you do. They, they were diving for cover all the time and creating their story bigger and bigger to cover their terrible, evil deeds. Yeah. Hmm. Um, remember that this was all started to protect Hillary Clinton from her illegal activities. Why, why has she got so much power in this one Probably woman? Because they kill people. I would say because they kill people. The Arkansas thing again. Yeah. Yeah. The body count, the Clinton body count. The... Hmm. 
Crossfire Hurricane was the documentary film in 2012 about the Rolling Stones. And uh, it comes from the first line of the 1968 hit Jumping Jack Flash. Did you just, did you just, oh, aim yeah, Crossfire Hurricane, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Oh, and I thought we were talking about other things, Cam, like I moved 30, on. thousand emails that were dismissed. Well, I think it's amusing. Every time I hear Jumping Jack Flash, I think, oh, that FBI guy must have been a fan of the Rolling Stones. It's the only place that Crossfire Hurricane exists anywhere together other yeah. than the FBI. So <laughs> must have been a Rolling Stones fan. Yeah. Okay, can't so say he's got very good gotta be, taste. Got to be careful. I don't about think Cam it. wants to talk about the Durham report anymore, Paul. What do you think? Got to be careful with Rolling Stones fans from now on. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll move on from that because time is ticking. Labor's nanny state instincts come to the fore yet again. What's happened? Well, they've come out with a a, a campaign to to lecture Kiwi families on how we should be able to. Well, what they've described it as is finding money in weird places which is a bit strange when Megan Woods is the person that's um, suggesting that. And I'm just wondering, you know, maybe there was some something stuck down the back of the sofa or something like that. But they've come up with these cockamamie ideas that we have to have shorter showers. You know, and I really shudder to, to pass this on to the listeners, this horrible visage of Megan Woods trying to have a shower inside five minutes. I mean, it, it, it's almost impossible. You need to, help, wouldn't she? <laughs> need some assistance. Yeah, there's all these things that have come out. You know, remember that Helen Clark pretty much lost the 2008 election because of her w- w- willingness to restrict uh, shower heads to, so we'd all have dribbly showers and, you know, light bulbs and uh, under a certain wattage and things like that. This just smacks of Helen Clark now having a hotline into Chris Hipkins and Megan Woods' um, fervent little imaginations on how they can further control New Zealanders. Do you think they brainstormed those ideas? uh, I just grouped them. No, like if brains were dynamite, these guys wouldn't have enough to blow their nose. (laughs) Because you know that they're not going to compromise on their showers and their warmth. Well, I'd hope not. Imagine the smell. Okay, not the thing to think about at breakfast time, I don't think, <laughs> while you're no. gobbling down your Wheaties and things. Yeah. We like hygienic people, don't we? Yes. yes. Basic yes. Western Keep it clean, world please. requirement, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe stopping them showering could could save the nation. All right, have we got anything more to say about that? Well, uh, well, it costs know, $2. Marty, $2.8 Marty, it's your dollars. turn. Marty, you've been sitting there and... Jacinda Ardern's re- resurfaced after a, a, a lengthy absence from the media and um, talking about her speech to the WHO. She said, crisis has always compelled us to act, learn and to work together. The question has never been, will we do something? The question is, will we do enough? Will we Which do is an enough? interesting take on that whole medical uh, like first do no harm. The mm. first thing you should always consider is doing nothing. Great point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that thing is pernicious beyond belief. And again, it's 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 like the absence of the extent of the Biden family criminal crime activity. Family. Crime family. Crime family. Yep. And um, it's absolute absence from New Zealand media. I, I brought up as well the misinformation of uh, missing all that barometric data. Uh, from its weather reports, this this glib kind of lying that just goes absolutely unchallenged. Going back to only 1978, just was leaving school then. So that's yeah, hardly a deep drill down into the history, is it? Going back to 1978. Well, well the knee, I think you're talking about the NIWA data, weren't you? Talking about barometric yeah. pressure. Yeah. Well, they've been they've been going for about You know, it was years. just the last shower, really. Yeah. Well, well that, I mean, they yeah. all think they all think we came down in the last shower. <laughs> well, we have. Shouldn't be having a shower. Take it. <laughs> yeah. We'll be like we'll be like the British after World War Two, where you, you had a, a damp a flannel to wash under your armpits. Speaking of World War Two, like, on the uh, media matters this week, I was saying I've been reading a bit of uh, Hannah Arendt, who coined the phrase "the banality of evil," because that's what I think of when I see Chris Hipkins. It's what I think of when I see Ashley Bloomfield. All yeah. these. Yeah. Meek, mild-mannered people who wouldn't hurt a fly who are administering this terrible stuff. Yeah. Soy boys do terrible things. 
Yeah. That's why it was, uh, Marty, what you put your finger on there is, and I'm glad you brought that up with Hannah Arendt, um, with the banality of evil, because she yeah. said that in the context of watching Eichmann, the Eichmann trial, which was held in Israel. Just right? how ordinary these people are. How with the little ordinary. ratty eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, But you, you, that's exactly the evil of people nobodies who will say don't blame me i'm just following orders yeah the martin bormans of this world yeah yeah and that's that's um that's all how looking they good in their, they all looked great in their hugo boss suits as they stomped all over europe well i mean at least they did that <laughs> yeah yeah okay well and the fact that uh, i think you made the point of and no one's talking about it and and we haven't You've just made that point, but I think we're so used to no one talking about it that we don't even think of that anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, the fact that um, you've got uh, Ardern out there cheering it along, uh, you know, it's really worth l more New Zealanders looking back at what she did with that in mind mm -hmm. and understanding what, what they're trying to do is suspend the sovereignty of nation states. Well, first of all, you have to get people to suspend disbelief. And then to once what? you suspend disbelief, you know, you think, oh, no, they'd never do that. Well, first of all, you've got to train the population into thinking that, no, they'll never do that. No. That, oh, that okay, has that, happened. That has oh, happened. Oh, yeah. Gara, tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah, Patty. And, uh, you know, and once you've got people to, sus to suspend their own rational thought of, you know, their eyes of, no, I'm not seeing this happen. It, it can't be happening. It's like, Once you've done that, then you can get people to do anything. This is not rocket science, right? We've seen this before. We saw how it was done in Nazi Germany, how you got a whole population to have a mass delusion to think that if they did these things, that it will all be okay in the end. And, and, and even the Jewish community, they were stepped one little bit at a time to mass extermination. Yeah, and every every little step that they took, it was, oh, it can't be that bad. It's okay. We'll just wear the gold stars. That'll be fine. Oh, it's okay. They can't take all of our business. You know, they, they need us to run them. Oh, it's okay. Um, You know, they can't. It's only a swimming pool that we can't go to anymore. And these little steps. Incremental. Slowly, incrementally advanced them. The Holocaust did not happen immediately. No. Right, it, it it happened over years. Mm. All we all we talk about is the end result. But yeah. if you look at all of, the, and you can only understand this, I think, if you've been to Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, and the way that museum is set up is it steps you through the same little steps that the German people put the Jewish community through, and the gypsies and everybody else that didn't suit their thing, and and you there's a one way path. There's a one-way path um, to, um, sorry, Th yeah, there's a one-way path through this museum which ends up basically at at the gas chambers. Yeah. yeah. And you can't go back through the, you can only go forwards. And this is, it's it's the analogy of, of how do you cook a frog, right? How do you, how do you boil it slowly. And it, yeah. it just, even, even the, I, I remember reading a lot about um, the Juden rate, um, you know, the Jews themselves that oversaw the ghettos where the children and the families went, especially in Hungary, um, but, it, but everywhere. And um, people were being told that they were being taken to a nice place, well, a camp, but, and there were honestly Jews there that gave their gold to get a room but, with a view. Yes, and they had and to buy a ticket. We're going to take you to this new place. But you have to buy a ticket. <laughs> yeah, you have to fund your own demise. Yeah. And and of course you'll have a room with a view. And of course your children will be taken care of. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, and the pools will be heated and, you know, th it'll be great. Yeah, it's so tragic. Well, here's the question. Are we seeing the same pattern? Well, well I think we did. We have seen it. You know, we were called conspiracy theorists during the pandemic. We'd say, well, hang on, this has happened before. This is This is the same tactic. The, the the shaming the um you know the othering the the separation of people in, into different 
you know, yep, secret. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Yep, yep, that's exactly what okay, it is. Well, we have seen it before, and it's happened, and it happened again, and then eventually, because of people like us saying, "You know, right you on. can't do that to us. You can bring your police, and you can stomp all over our tents, and you can smash us all up, but." We're not going to accept that. We're not going to lie down. We, we are going to say that was the end of our doom when she saw that happen and them all still standing there saying, you know, stuff you. That was the end of her. She realized that this was only going to grow. Wow. Yeah. And that, and that could one more thing on that was yep. um, just, just to, I do have the odd positive thought now and then. And it centers <laughs> around this is why resistance is so flipping important in our time. You must have resistance. Yep. Um, and the way forward with all this um, dictatorial nonsense that they want to come from places like the WHO and whatever wars they draw us into, we must be committed to our parallel communities. Parallel communities and Voices for Freedom are so good at this. Your mm. own gardens, your own ability to trade. We must keep our own cash alive our bullion and be able to trade our way to just hold our own as whatever breaks around us can smash around us, but we'll be okay um, without having to go to, you know, gulags and things like that. But you know that whatever's been kicked off, the globalists are not going to give up until each nation state has its sovereignty smashed. And that means the individuals within that state or nation. So that's why parallel communities are just so goddamn important. Well said. We're going to have to spin through. We've probably gone over time, but hey, it's been interesting. Let's spin through the last couple of uh, topics really quickly. Probably don't need to spend too much time on them. What's this about the National Party using AI in their election campaign? What, what's the issue with that? Well, the News Hub ran this massive news story yesterday uh, or the other day about um, how the National Party was now using AI-generated you know, photos in, in their advertising, and this was an outrage. An outrage, it's terrible. You know, this is the same organisation that, you know, went and racked up um, rights holders for songs and things like that to get the National Party in trouble over that. So now they're in trouble for using their own images that they've dreamed up out of their own minds. Um, they even lined up some woke womble in their own studio to um, complain that, that, that this use of AI to create Maori and Pacifica images was somehow racist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like this is a nothing story. It's like what Marty said. This is a weapon of mass distraction. Distraction. It's right? so painful. So let's just talk about that. But but I think we have to talk about it to just mock them mercilessly. You yeah, know, there's yeah. a th these people are dolts. They're they're absolute idiots, and they nice. take us all for being stupid. And we just need to laugh at them. We need to do. Well, they do in The Simpsons, you know, with that character, he points at people and he goes, ha, ha. Oh, ha. the Adams family. Yeah, that's what we need to do. And and it's just ridiculous and it shows the lengths that our own media are going to in order to hurt the major party that will be involved in trying to unseat this government. You know, they've got a vested interest in keeping the left in power because that's where they've had millions and millions of dollars of state funding to support them. They're never going to bite the hand that feeds them, so they'll bite anybody else's hand, and that's basically what it is. Okay, what about uh, their uh, slogan? Is this their new slogan, get New Zealand back on track? I have to say that seems very <laughs> underwhelming to me. What about let's save New Zealand? Well, but but yeah, get New Zealand back on track, what, what, you know, with you? I mean, how which it's, track? It's it weak. So unique. It's weak. But, what but I, got it. I, I mean, I worked on the national. Well, I helped work on the National Party campaign in two thousand and eight. In the slogan, and we gave the guy I was working with, and we gave them all these really good punchy headlines. And the one they went with was um, "Choose a brighter future." Mm. <laughs> and some wag, <laughs> some wag out there came out and said on Twitter. Why don't you choose a brighter poster? <laughs> <laughs> like get, get New Zealand back on track. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. punchy. It's not catchy. It's Vanilla, not like, but that's what they like. It's not like Make America Great Again, but, you know, bless, it's the National Party. At least they're trying. Yeah, they wouldn't want Are to they? What do you think, Marty? It's going to win them anything? In a nutshell, I'm I'm saying it's a big circle jerk and and um, <laughs> yeah. that they, they just uh, – 
sit in a room and agree with themselves, stuff that they care about and middle voters don't. Pussies. You know, a lot, of, a lot of guys who climb the corporate ladder uh, don't get the girly action they want. Oh, the girly right? action. Yeah. So what they do when they, when they get the boss's job is they install a whole uh, retinue of PR chicks and HR <laughs> chicks and marketing <laughs> girls, and um, they finally get the worshipful uh, uh, adulation that they've been craving. <laughs> jerking off thinking about since they were teenagers <laughs> yeah. and um and what happens is you get a you, you get a whole lot of um bad ideas yeah uh, well I it's, think not, this it's not is a great pickup line is it uh, hi get, darling get new zealand back on track get new zealand back on track like, the, it, like ooh, it, you're a nice and boy. you know he would have said it how back on track yeah <laughs> back, back. It, it's, it's gonna back sound even true. worse than so Oh dear, oh. And, and I'm trying to uh, imagine that in Christopher Luxon's voice. Oh no! Yeah. In oh. his simpering, weak, effeminate. All right, <laughs> and um, I think one more, and uh, this is real quick because it's on your list, um, Cam. Ginny Anderson getting mauled by Hosking, or was she just what uh, defaulting to the talking points all the time? Oh, she got absolutely slaughtered by Hosking. He just kept insisting she answered the question. And she just kept on saying the same talking point over and over. And eventually he just said, oh, you've said that seven times. Can, can you come up with something new? And then so she rabbited off the press release that she'd put out. And he called her on it and said, uh, well, that's just off the press release. It's word for word. It, haven't you got any ideas? So he just slayed her. You know, and I saw some wag on Twitter say that he's been convinced for some time that Aisha Verrill will end up quite easily as the worst performer in the Labour cabinet. But that Ginny Anderson, she's a dark horse making a strong push. <laughs> and I, I tend to agree with that person on Twitter. I think she's absolutely hopeless and out of her depth. And her sole claim to fame is that she once worked as a secretary or something in the police. Oh, is that why she's police minister? Is it? Apparently, is it, yeah. Some, some, some sort of that was her claim to fame. Yeah, her claim to fame. Some member of some committee of the. Oh, I don't know. She's. She's dumb as a bag of hammers and she has no grasp on the whole concept of, you know, sits there gaslighting the whole country saying that crime's actually not as bad. It's just because we've got a, a new app that means we can report yeah. crime more. So it looks like there's oh, more crime. Mm. That, that, but that's what this government does. They just gaslight us, you know, tell us. Why don't they you know, deal with ram rates? I mean, that that, poor, those poor people in Titarangi, they had to close their post shop. Oh, no. Because they've had, what, seven burglaries and... Five years, that's the entirety of Jacinda Ardern's reign here. I mean, really, these people's lives are far better off. And getting back to what Marty said about The Who with Jacinda's speech, where she said, um, you know, in the aftermath of the crisis, we have not just done something, we have done enough. And I think about those people having to close their business. Yeah, they've done enough, all right. Yeah. They enough. have really ruined, ruined this country and ordinary people who need a livelihood uh, after 20 years of going out of business because, what, they get ran raided. I think what we need to have, I reckon we should do this, Paul, is we should have a Gaslighter of the Week award. That's a great idea. Right, and, and it'll yeah. be a Labour person who's, who's gaslighting us, you know, safe and effective, you know, um, uh, stay home, all of this bullshit that we were gaslit with yeah, about gas. how we were going we to flatten the curve. Oh, don't you know, say that one. Uh, all of that bollocks. It was all just gaslighting us. And that's what these guys do. They just gaslight us. So, you know, the, the robbery that you saw um, in Puanui Road in Papatoi, no, you didn't see that. There was just some youth adjacent people that um, were a bit deprived and wanted a bottle of fizzy drink. It wasn't a robbery at all. Gaslighter of the week. That's what yeah. we can call it. Well, I think we should get New Zealand back on track. <laughs> I really, it's pronounced really Beck on Trick. Stop it. Beck, Beck, yeah. Beck on Trick. No, no, no. Uh, I'm excited for New Zealand, and I think that we need to get it back on track. Trick. I really think we need to go back on the track. Does that mean you, you could really mash that one up too, couldn't you? Well, well, you know, we haven't even built the track yet if it's a Labour government. You know, where's the track to the airport? <laughs> 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 We've got to build the track first before we can get it back, back on, on it. the cycle way. <laughs> but, but, but Cam, we're going to get more tracks than um, roads repaired, remember? Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, we can fix all the potholes by abandoning the roads and trains. Yeah. 
on All coastal right. shipping. Coastal shipping. We're going to use coastal shipping to get goods to Taupo. Uh, <laughs> thinking about that one. Well, that's what the fool said. Yeah. You know, you know, right. oh, well, coastal shipping was a great. The great Taupo Canal. <laughs> it's called the Waikato River, but there's these pesky little things that provide power in the way called dams. Well, if they stop showering, we won't need them. Oh, true. No, no, we need it for the power for all the gay electric cars and the you know, subsidies to huge Australian uh, multinationals that want to turn their oh, recy- yeah. recycling steel pot into an electric furnace. <laughs> this is just nuts. It's just not, you can just imagine, right, we've installed it now and we're about to turn it on the whole of what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they stop built, a few ram raids. They haven't built any more generation. They're encouraging all the wealthy people to go and buy these electric cars and plug them in in the suburbs where they haven't upgraded the electrical infrastructure. And now we're going to turn one of the biggest energy consumers in the country even bigger by turning on this electric furnace. I mean, God, but that just feeds back into this whole smashing of sovereign nations that globalism is all about. Yeah. They must take out our infrastructure. That has to go. Well, they give us, us shitty infrastructure like wind turbines and solar and say, yeah, well, no, it it's work. it doesn't work. No. You know, when there's an emergency, what, what do people turn to? Do you think all the fire trucks that went Big out to Pihar? Theme there. <laughs> Right. They're all diesel powered. Yeah. The carbon they want to reduce is you. It's humans. You. Yeah, it's you, yeah. exactly. If we only got things back on track. <laughs> all right. right, let's let let's uh, finish up there. That was a that was a long that was a long one. But hey, you know, um, there's plenty to talk about. And we'll do that gaslighter of the week next week. And uh, someone will have to be in charge of it, administering that, though. That's the only thing. Here, here's the Cameron, thing, Paul. It might, yeah, I'll do that. You. I'll it'll do you. that. So, but here's the thing, right? And we might be long and we've had it, you know, thrash some of these things out. But it sure as hell beats what other, you know, media organizations are doing where they have 20 seconds on that, 30 seconds on that. This is about educating people and, and exposing people to, a plethora of ideas of which they Corn. can then, yeah, cornucopia. cornucopia, all sorts of other big words that no one in the mainstream media knows how to spell, much less say. We'll bear it. <laughs> we'll bear it. <laughs> okay, well, that was a lot With of fun. Pain. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great week, and you we'll too, do it Paul. all again next Friday, huh? How about thanks. that? Yeah, thanks all very right. much, Paul. Thanks. Thank Have you. a great week.